Alright guys, we're fairly sure that everything should be fixed now. It's definitely, definitely fixed, Dan. 100%. You heard it yourself, guys. We made sure. So, right. just one of those days where things just go nuclear, technical-wise. But we should be good to go now here. Again, G-Play 7-1 up against Epsilon on the less favoured side, the T side of Inferno. How are you feeling about today's proceedings so far? Well, Epsilon haven't been able to have one real proper buy with an AWP or something and full nades, so... They've never got to their comfort zone, but at the same time, some of their defensive setups, I'm not a big fan of. I have of. to say, I was scared until I heard the sound. Uh, <laughs> we definitely um, bring it down a bit, though. It's a, it's a bit too loud. G Play have been really just exploiting them and just been looking really confident, and they've been nailing them completely on entries. Have you ever been exploited, Dan? And the lack of nades has been a, have been a problem as well. Uh, Epsilon. Looking for a more aggressive play on Banana this time around. They haven't done that for quite a while. They did it very early on. They've got three of their personnel towards that B site. Got that bomb, sorry, that smoke down at the bottom of Banana. Just going to hold it semi passively here. Not going to go all the way down just yet. Going to be re smoked there by Uzi and it's going to rotate and just leave Biggie on the B bomb site by himself for the time being. Yeah, this is definitely looking better from Epsilon, but still, the, it remains to be seen whether or not G Play can just walk all over them again, which is what they have been doing. They've been walking in, aiming, and killing Epsilon players. They don't seem to be having problems with that. But there goes the pop flash over for Epsilon. Get some kills. That's a nice one there from GMX, as he does thin out the presence um, for G Play on apartments. It's interesting how passive G Play being in this round, because again, it's, it's almost as if they wanted to uh, take control of Banana, which is still smoked, as we have 40 seconds remaining, um, I might add. And that's going to force the rotation from Uzi, but uh, just they don't have much time to actually take this site here. I mean, 29 seconds. They don't have control of quad. They're going to have to push around from Arch. They have got the frag on Uzi, though. Trade's coming in. Still three versus three. 20 seconds remaining now, and they are running out of time pretty fast. Dreamer going down, uh, and that's going to be a clean sweep from the remaining Epsilon players. So G play possibly too passive, maybe. Sensing desperation from Epsilon, they're just waiting for the push, but there was no push. Yeah, Apart I mean, from the Bronner push. There's been a lot of rounds when Epsilon have had the names where which have looked like this so far, and, but usually G play just walk all over them. Um, that's been kind of the issue. That setup was much better from Epsilon because that was one of the first times in recent mo in recent rounds where Epsilon had two players towards quad side. It, it actually, they've only had one in many of these spots, and that's really been a problem. So it's good that they've been switching that up. In, we're going to see now, uh, again, a very very default setup. That's and a beautiful pop flash from screen. I still really am looking forward to this FXO AWP. In previous Infernos, he's been clocking you know, around like 30 frags, like huge fragger on the CT side for Epsilon. So it is definitely a very big edge to be, to be used for Epsilon if they can just get there. But the money is so tight so far for them. And I love how patient G play are. Patience is absolutely a virtue on Inferno when you can see that the CTs, they have a nice advantage as long as these smokes are up. Yeah, Epsilon definitely playing the clock game here as we can see. Once again, G-Play going to start to move around that 40 second clock, just going to start to walk up mid. I mean, again, as you said, the patience just waiting for the CTs to exhaust all of their uh, smoke grenades has been quite impressive, but they are going to be up against an army of Epsilon players here, but Uzi just looking away from the flash at the wrong time, and uh, he's going to fall down. Fexio, though, getting two trade frags there. Still 21 seconds remaining, and they don't have control of the site. Screen putting in some work there with the Famas. Going to be taken down by Dreamer. They should be able to plant the bomb on the site now. Do they know where Fexio is? He's creeping in quad while his teammate's going to run distraction in the arch area. That's going to be Biggie. Fexio is creeping along. Dreamer has him in his crosshairs, easily dispatching of Fexio. And in comes Biggie. He was tasked with B alone. And now he's tasked with the retake of the A bomb side against two players. He knows one's in pit. You can see how wary he is of that. But he's going to get caught from behind as Bubble peaks just at the right moment. And that round goes to G play once again. And we see that Epsilon's economy is in tatters. And this is looking very bad indeed for them. G play again, they 16 2 orbit on this map, so it's not surprising to see them do so well. But at yeah. the same time, Epsilon can't quite climb their way out of this hole that they've they found themselves in. Have you ever been to Bulgaria? No. Me neither. I'd like to go to Sofia though. One day. 
CT. CTs find themselves on the eco here. Biggie going to be the first to fall. Scream is rolling with Kevlar and the Deagle. We are in with Scream now, so we'll see what he can do if this push continues towards the B site. You can see them stacking up here, preparing for a push here. But they're still keeping their options open. You can see Spy Leader all the way over in the second mid. So if they need to retreat, they can. We can also stop the flank. But again, it just keeps their options open, generally speaking. So GMX, he is in the balcony area. Looking to uh, have a peek around mid. Has just missed Spy Leader walking up mid at the moment. Still passive play. Just just waiting, G play. Well, Spy Leader is just kind of clearing the site. He's going to identify that there is a stack towards the B sites. But if they start to rotate, you can see them slowly moving away from B now. And let's see what GMX can do. Has he heard? No, he's going to get caught in the middle of mid. And uh, too much firepower from the Terrors. It's going to force the rotation from Epsilon to the A site. But they're going to be far too late. G play going to have their post plant positions set up. You can see the rotation just creeping in, being very, very careful. Really running the clock down as well. 15 seconds remain as the bomb goes down for the Bulgarians. Two players remaining for the Epsilon side. You can see Scream looking for the frag there. It's going to be left down to effect with a P250. Just hanging around the B bomb site. So uh, nothing doing for him. He's looking, expecting them to come looking for him. And uh, there is a conga line going through the library area at the moment, as you can see on your top left radar. So this is a pretty bad half so far for Epsilon. I mean, they're yeah. running out of... They have barely any rounds left for FX here to get his warp going. And by the time he does, G play with nine rounds on the board. It's looking pretty good for them. This is the best of three, though, let's not forget. It costs so little money. It's, it's, it really sucks for them. Um, this is... <laughs> This is really, really bad. I don't know how to put it other than, other than that. So what's um, the map after this one? Um, let's see if we can f figure that one out real quick. No, oh, I'm still figuring that one out. Oh, it's Dust2, okay. Dust2. Okay, we have Cash as the decider. Three so really open, well, sorry, two really open maps. Yes. So Fexio could definitely get back into it. I mean, how much do you know about the G-Play team? Do they have a strong opera on their team, or? Well, right now it's... Uh, they are news to me as far as we're seeing them. This is the first like proper proper match that I've seen them in. Uzi's in trouble here. In recent times. So we'll have to see if Epsilon can bring it back here. They still have a chance to do so. I mean, if they can start stringing things together here, and it's starting off well, they're able to take down uh, Victor there as he does go for the push. It's a trade, however, so G plays still in with the advantage on the numbers game as they can decide to, to bully the CTs now as they're kind of forced to split up two Again, to a site. Look at uh, the strength of the hold here oh, wow. from them. Good pick there from FX, so it gets away with it as well. Uzi gets shot down to 4 HP now, so he's surviving on the skin of his teeth during uh, two frags there, one his own and uh, that one from FX. So that does give them a bit of an advantage, but prior to that happening, Dreamer was just holding the mid area, keeping an eye on any potential flanks through app, so G play doing very good map control, keeping their options open for as long as possible. And again, they start to creep into the B bomb site now, as we have Uzi at the back of the site. Takes down another one, still with 4 HP. They cannot kill this man. Finally, he goes down. They're going to go straight for the bomb plot, not realizing that Effectio is going to put that a stop to that. Gets the other frag as well. Three Epsilon players surviving. Not many rounds left, but that is going to be important because look at the money on the rest of their team. They're going to have to drop for the two remaining players. See a FAMAS being picked up there. That was a key round in the uh, of this first half here for Epsilon. And uh, G Play made a mistake as well. I mean, they had Spy Leader go for a push on that angle, and his teammate was clearly far too far too far away to trade him. So if he had, would have communicated, I'm going to go push this. He just he just teammate just needed to know to take a few steps forwards, and then it would have been a trade, and they would have been three on three, and they would have had the advantage into the site. But this is either a truck smoke or a pit smoke. Let's have a look. What well, the cameras changed, but. I think they're covering all the uh, options there as this quad push does come in. So the pit smoked, the truck is also smoked, but uh, Effectio is going to not be smoked off on the arch and just get a free kill as Dreamer starts to push the sight of all of his teammates lagging behind. GMX now just poking through the smoke, taking down two. All of a sudden, only victors remaining, so lots of fancy smokes, but uh, the execution afterwards, not optimal there by G Play. Again, had all the smokes for one side and then got shot by the other. The one player who just pushed through on his own. I don't know if that, that was like an information play because literally the other four players were just standing in quad. Yeah, I, I think it was just a bit of 
bit of confusion in the chaos. And GMX got three frags from from graveyard, and I don't think they had any visibility there. So just a bit of a mess, really. And good play from GMX well, after getting smoked off in pit to get himself up there. But G plays still with plenty of cash to put these strong buys in, and we're going to see Epsilon returning to their their car hold on Banana. And there's two players there for G play to try to contest that, but with the smoke down, there's not a lot they can do for the time being. And we're going to see that. They are going to try and work some map control on the other side of the map. So very, very standard opening here. But where will the first kill be? Where will the first engagement really be? They are really contesting Banana here. They are not giving it up for anything. They are refusing to have it dominated by the French right now. Just holding that position, passive position there from the tree area, which you can no longer jump into from those logs. Which makes me sad. They know NKL is, is likely they're just missing with the, the incendiary just slightly, but they're going to fall back now. 45 seconds left on the clock, and we're going to start to see G play moving in for the A play. Scream up in apartments, ready and waiting. Going to take down Dreamer just with the M4. Out. And the uh, problem is, though, G play are on the bomb site, and Scream's really low at the moment. They've got great positions on A. The bomb is going to get planted. By Victor, as he is going to be able to rest on the site. NKL going to go down, so it's all on to Spy Leader and Victor as uh, we see Epsilon now moving in with three men on the retake. However, Scream is quite low. And they go. Flashes. Bomb is getting further and further ticked now. In they are. Spy Leader going to pop out just on the side of the smoke, and Biggie, oh my goodness! Spy Leader walking straight in front of him, and he has just enough time to get the defuse going. That was very unexpected. Um, I don't. I'm not sure how. How did that? That was weird. That was really strange. Yeah. Well, they had uh, they had Epsilon had a player uh, on quad, which I think just distracted the rest of the team there. So he was strafing uh, away from pit. Yeah. Just just the blind spot. Just yeah. as as Jim uh, Biggie came through the smoke on library. That's very. Finally, we're seeing the AWP from FX0 as we have a three-man push on B, but uh, these early pushes are going to pay off for FX0. Finally, they get a connection. Again, G-Play uh, being very, very passive at the beginning of almost every single round. And again, you can just see Dreamer just standing still, not moving, playing a very passive position around the app's area. And they, they should be able to predict that now FX0 has gone back to Archside. And this is this is uh, the the most standard of ways to play a B push with the orb. Then you know take the shot, go back to arch. Um, so they could predict this and uh, let's see if James can wiggle us out of the smoke now. I'm stuck in the in the in the brush in the shrubbery, but uh <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Either way, what a nice plan. Looks like G play are going to be losing almost everyone. Dreamers. The only one left, and he's going to get dealt with by GMX. So it's a good hold there. G play <laughs> pushing into B and being largely un unsuccessful. So Epsilon are going to make themselves look much, much better at the end of the first half. However, G play still with a significant advantage to play with. 9 6 on the T half is really nice for G play. Absolutely. And, but it's a reasonable comeback for Epsilon. I think it was 7 1 at one point, right? Yeah. When we came back from the last break, it was 7 1. And oh, yeah. now it's 9-6 uh, in favor of the Bulgarian team. So let's have a look at how this pistol goes. Again, even if they win this pistol, it's going to be a long way. But if they can break uh, the G-Play economy in Biggie the way... Biggie didn't buy anything. Still got $800. He didn't That's buy anything at all. He didn't buy anything. Fair enough. Fair enough. Interesting. Right. Is, that, is, that, is that like... Is he saving for the AWP, do you think? Like, like proper saving? Hardcore? All the pennies. <sighs> I, I think the pistol round has so much of an impact that you should always buy. You should never save. But anyway, looks like uh, G Play going to find themselves a house full of teas. And it's going to be uh, a nice result there for Epsilon taking down two players. Dream on the site now. He's got to come out with some big results here. Gets immediately dropped there. And Spy Leader, it's all on him. All the pressure is on his shoulders. But uh, G Play still with that round advantage. Is they're going to feel relatively comfortable even though they'll be losing this one. It should. Ready, unless Spidey there does something pretty magnificent. He doesn't have a kit in his hands just yet. As well, something to consider here. So that bomb was just planted. They're able to take down Uzi on the flank. Now they've got to be careful here. Run through that smoke. Oh, that's a nice tag. And uh, James, is that your doing? I don't know why it does this. I haven't. Yeah. I just. This just. Go TV just bugged as hell, man. 
It won't, it won't let us leave smoke grenades. It gives these random cinematic views without us asking. It's just crazy. It's got a mind of its own. But I do wonder uh, if Biggie just forgot to buy. I think so. Like maybe he thought he bought armor and then forgot he didn't buy armor. Yeah, I, I don't think there's no reason not to buy Because it, like sort. if he was saving, it would make sense that he was rolling with a CZ now, not GMX. But GMX likes to be at the back of things and tries to kind of, you know, he's, he's busy with the puppet strings. E equally though, with, if you have a player who has got like a CZ or something, you can send him first, because often you're going to be looking for a stack, or you, you want a player that can like risk his life, but not give away an important weapon like an AK or a Galil. And if, they, if he drops a CZ, I mean, you're not going to be crying too much. It's something we saw Fnatic do uh, when a CZ was infinitely overpowered to what it is before, but I feel like Part of it with GMX is that he doesn't get so much so many frags because he's kind of he's a guy who throws all the nades for his team, but also it allows him to uh, think about what's going on. So we are going to have Scream looking for the opening from Boiler, perhaps, or maybe not. He's just <laughs> going to straight away just jump back out, kind of flirting with the idea of peeking, but not in the end. And uh, G play with these pistols can certainly cause some trouble here on the A bomb site. They've got. In good positions, but the flashes come in and can't shoot anything when you're blind. It would seem Dreamer going down and Rumble now spotted on the site itself. Looks like uh, it is troubling times here for G Play as uh, Epsilon look ready now to actually bring this back to what would be close to a tied match. They uh, drop a couple players at the end, but that's a 9 8 score now as G Play have to go for their save. So we will be tied up here, assuming that Epsilon. Don't do anything crazy, and uh, do indeed win this round. Okay, so we have a pause coming in. Let's have a look at how things are going at the moment. Obviously, Epsilon winning the pistol round, which is going to be important for them, of course. But uh, it's still going to be a bit of an uphill struggle, even if even if they win this final round and, it, and bring it to 9-9. They need to win seven rounds on the T side. But again, I mean, basically the same thing just happened to G play, so I don't see why it can't happen to Epsilon, but it, it's not going to be easy. It's yeah. not going to be easy. I mean, we saw a significant change in Epsilon, in Epsilon on the CT side when they started to have some money together to play with. And then also when Epsilon ha had an AWP on FX show, even though it was just the 15th round, the last one that he had that, we can see that he moved in for the aggressive play on, on Banana and like instantly killed, killed someone with a great flick shot. And that was something that just wasn't present in the entire first half for them. So Epsilon weren't able to show their strength on CT because their strength, their CT strength is actually because of um, the dominance that FX can bring to the table with the AWP and, and how well Scream can play uh, the pit kind of apartments area on A is is usually quite terrifying. Like we've seen some terrifying results from them. I think uh, they they've had some some really big performances on Inferno. I think they beat NIP on Inferno not so long ago, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, so yeah, they they're pretty scary there. And, and and G Play did a good job denying that. And uh, Epsilon going to be hard pressed to put G Play in that same position. But we'll see if they get they've got the goods. So, what's your opinion of G Play so far? Well, I think it's difficult because. Uh, they they won they won the right rounds uh they made the right plays to keep epsilon out of the game that they that they are the strongest in and that is to some extent to their merit but i do also want to see how g play could have played against an epsilon ct that was fully stacked out and fully loaded yeah we didn't really get to see that so so i'm i'm kind of reserving my judgment for now but their recent results suggest that they are up and coming and and very strong but yeah, just just uh, looking forward to seeing how things play out here on their CT uh, CT half as well, and also uh, you know moving into the next map, Dust Two, also how things develop there. So I'm going to reserve my judgment for now. Mm. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to uh, seeing an open map with both teams as well. That will be interesting. So we're almost get almost getting back into this game, people. Should be there in just a few seconds. So I wonder how long these these guys have been together for. You know, they've got a lot of sponsors. Look at all their sponsors. They've got Plantronics, they've got AOC, Valley Computers, which I think I think is I think their manager owns that company or something. So Well these two teams have never played each other apparently, so 
So this is a new experience for both of them. But you know, Epsilon is starting to show more and more chemistry, and and G Play being as upcoming as they are. These are like really interesting matches. Like like just just like yesterday, we had some really f really good best of three matches. Uh, yesterday, Hellraisers and LGB. Uh, if you missed it, LGB managed to take down Hellraisers, and LGB is uh, a Norwegian lineup now. And um, uh, forming forming of some some pr uh, past London conspiracy players. You got Rubino from the old H2K, and uh, we also had had uh, Navi and Mouse Sports, and that was a really sick match as well. We saw some great stuff there, and Navi always such a joy to watch. Mouse Sports are showing so much potential. It's kind of unfortunate that they ran into Navi because I feel like Mouse Sports could have had had a. a any other team in this in this eight eight team uh, bracket could have been, I think, e an easier job for them than Navi. Well, Navi you've got to really beat good. the best if you want to. True, it's true. Join the rest. It is true. Boom. It is true. And I apologise if I still sound really nasally. I'm I'm under the weather a little bit, but uh, it happens. I'm only human. Okay, so we resume the match. Let's have a look at what the dealio is with the G button. So we're going to find the CTs on the last eco. Not much of a buy coming out whatsoever. We've got a Victor with a P250 and that is about it pretty much. So tentative passive play here from the T's. You can see the bomb is in an entirely recoverable position on your screens. And Epsilon on a fact-finding mission right now, trying to f figure out where a potential stack is. Bubble has been seen and has been robbed of 95 of 100 HP. He's going to be playing the arch area, but the first frag going to go in favor of Dreamer, taking down GMX. He's going to pick up the gun, though. Hasn't picked up the gun just yet, so can only presume that GMX was on the balcony area. That's going to instantly force the rotation over to the B-bomb site from the French. Biggie has to be careful that he doesn't get caught with a nade in his hand there. Gets the first frag onto the B-site. There's a second after a push through the smoke, and that's going to be the bomb site in control of the French. See, Bubble indeed has that AK, and with 5 HP, he's going to go for the save. And Dreamer is probably going to go to see how much damage he can do. Got a CZ, no armor, so nothing to lose, really. See what he can do. So it looks like uh, GMX was just rolling with the CZ once again. So only one gun loss for Epsilon, as I say that. There's the uh, third frag of the round for G play. So they're going to save two AKs here. Meanwhile, we have Big E and Uzi making their escape. Uzi only with a P250 somehow. Just wondering, did they go through that round with uh, only two rifles? Well, I mean, uh, it's it's three early, rifles, sorry. It's uh, early days, and they can get the saves going for those big, big guns. Really want to see big the AWP on this man right here. Come on, come on! You've got. 59.50. There it is. Going to be thrown off across by Biggie there. So here we are. Two AKs saved for G play. That's really nice on the CT side. Don't want to peek against FX your mill. They're not going to do it. At least not yet. Anyways, we have G play playing without a smoke. Actually, just going for the open peaks here on Banana. Spy leader just re-peeking and re-peeking there. Playing with fire. In goes. The Molotov there from the T's, that's actually a very well placed. It's going to cut off the escape route just momentarily now for uh, for Victor. So we'll have to see if Epsilon just try to take control of this, this banana area. They've they've managed to put a lot of good pressure on and then they just haven't really been there for G-Play to just deny it. And uh, at the same time, Epsilon are taking control of middle as well. And G-Play have fallen all the way back on all the positions. Very passive play coming in, and the rotation is coming in as well from Bubble. So, call has been made, and he is going to be adding extra support to the arch area where he's going to find at least three of the freshmen starting to push. Going to hold a more passive angle there, but uh, Uzi going to get the better of him. Take down that frag. The wrap could be real here, and Victor is in a difficult position. Looks like he may go for a push through the smoke as rotations are coming in in CT. You can see that uh, NKL has got past Eps, uh, GMX, who's taken down Dreamer as he tries to rotate as well. Things are falling down, and uh, this is not going G Play's way whatsoever. We've got NKL kind of lost in CT spawn, sandwiched between at least one Frenchman and the rest of them on the B site. We have uh, Spidey has just left him to fend for himself as he's going to be playing with that chicken coop. So, see if. Uh, who gets the best angle? NKL is going to get the better of GMX and save another AK here. 
is going to be hunted by the French though. See if he goes to pit or if he's going to go and try and jump into apps. Got Big E starting to approach. Looks like Spy Leader will save without much trouble. And it's just going to be if NKL can save this or if he can do some more damage. Gets shot straight in the dome there. So going to be Spy Leader saving that solo rifle for the Bulgarian team as uh, Epsilon break their economy. Yeah, so they're looking really strong now. And G play. Uh, no money really to get to get the proper buys going, but they do have enough to get scrap some pistols together. Sometimes that's enough. But Epsilon, yeah, they're looking really nice and uh, very patient in the last round, relying on their individual skill when all the grenades went away, looking for those open uh, open jewels. And largely, G play gave them to, uh, to to Epsilon. Nice trade there. That one AK on the team getting the first frag. Trade coming in immediately though, and that's going to crush the rest of the G Play's uh, team's firepower. I'm curious to see if they're going to throw that AK across the fence or if they're just going to uh, leave it there and try and protect it. Scream, you can see, he's just controlling the banana area. And as we approach, I don't see any trace of that gun. So they got the trade we saw. It's on the floor actually. Immediately, bubble went from A to rotate towards B. So now they're, they're, on, they're on a 4 and 2. No matter what they do, Epsilon get a 4 and 2 right now. So here we go, making their way into the B-bomb site. Tossing all the grenades. And uh, there's the spray scream helping Victor take down GMX a little bit there. But uh, FX show on the flank. They've got more than enough players to put on all the right positions to stop this retake. And bomb does go down. Bubble in construction. As Epsilon have perfect positions. There it is, scream. Working his magic. Scream doing what Scream does. And uh, going to find himself the last kill there onto Bubble. And there you go. 11 to 9, Epsilon looking fantastic. Now G Play have loads of cash in the bank and they can start getting the buys going once again. And we'll have to see how that goes. But first of all, another pause coming in whilst we have what seems to be some DDoS, which riddles Epsilon games, it would appear. Indeed. So I know. Uh Looking at the pings quickly, it seems okay over there. So we'll have to see what happens. Give these guys a few seconds to look at whatever issues they may be having. Again, as you said, it's Epsilon Nara team who get a lot of DDoS. Uh, some people, things seem to vary being a, a, con a, a continent with lots of different countries, with lots of different ISPs in each country, and they all have to run things their own ways. Some ISPs, it's not possible to change your, uh, your, your IP. So once it's been found, then uh, you have problems for a significant GG. amount of time. The thing is, though, I think when you when you have professional teams, again, these guys in effect shows uh, interview said that they just signed contracts. If you're having all these problems on an IP you can't change, then surely it's time to get a new internet connection, right? It seems a no-brainer to me, and I think this is a team where they, their internet problems have gone on for long enough as well. Yeah, it's been known for a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's quite difficult depending on their living situation, like because I mean, I mean if, if you're living with your parents, maybe maybe you can't. I don't know. Some parents aren't as supportive, or I don't know. There's, there's loads. Of di there's loads of little different factors. Or of course, like you say, when you're a professional player, you should be a professional player if you can have prof the professional standards where you're able to actually deal with this stuff because it's part of the game. It's been a part of the game for ages now. This DDoSing thing yeah. just happens. Like if you're a professional player, you have to consider every single measure to to prevent and also to deal with it when it happens, the those things. So yeah, it sucks. It's pretty much the worst thing in Counter Strike, apart from apart from some other stuff that's happened recently, but that's <laughs> also pretty bad. But but on a regular day to day basis, this is like the worst thing really. Most disruptive thing. Yeah. So yeah. So uh yeah, I d I do I do think it's worth mentioning though that, you know, where people have professional organizations behind them, I feel like they should be able to provide their players with like dedicated lines just to use for the game itself. Yeah. So it's not used for any other purpose. So that'd be really cool. Happen. Also, yeah. there, there's that big streamer called Destiny. Um, mm. I someone linked me to hit the DDoS guide he made because he That's used to really suffer old as well. Yeah, he used to suffer a lot from DDoS, but um, yeah. he he has some solutions. There. I don't know if they're still relevant. You just said they're still old, or it was quite it's old. It's it was made years ago. Yeah, like ver like probably two years ago. I think that was probably made. I, that's what it, uh, my feeling is when he started to get DDoS a lot. Mm -hmm. um, because the guy is pretty polarizing in that sense. I've never watched his streams. So. Yeah, he's pretty funny. Um, he started playing a lot of CS, and he's 
He's not very good. <laughs> he's not very good. But it's funny to watch him, though. He's just a hilarious character. He's just, an ama- he's just one of those amazing personalities. The Star- Starcraft scene has a, a really good way of just pumping out like hilarious individuals. There's so many of them. It's great to watch in Starcraft. But, but yeah, even in Control, has been starting to play CS. So I've seen him tweeting that he's playing CS, which is like quite on his stream. It's like quite weird to me because I see these people as like because st- I used to play loads and, and I follow StarCraft since Brood War, and now I'm seeing these people like go into like kind of what I see as kind of my, more my scene in a sense. So it's really interesting, and I hope that continues because it's awesome. This game is growing like crazy, isn't it? It's insane. This is gonna this like DreamHack just announcing that you know this is gonna be their main their main game or whatever. Like having all these tournaments, like we have the tournament in France that's gonna be coming up at the DreamHack Open for CS. So that's like amazing. Yeah, that's, the, that's the whole year, the tour, the DreamHack Open. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, it's like this. W- this game might just be the biggest esport. I hope it is. Twenty fifteen. That's that's crazy. CS cool. should always be number one. Yeah, it's looking really good. So I'm excited for this year. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Um, but, but back so to DDoS. <laughs> after Dan's wild, I was just sitting here waiting for you to full circle back. Yeah, I was, I was to the like original topic, but it was never going to happen. But back to DDoS organizers, please. If your teammates. If your team are getting DDoS all the time, provide them with second internet connections. Because I remember there was an American team. I don't know which one it was. Hopefully one of the uh, more honest ones. But someone got DDoS, <laughs> and like two minutes later, they were back on a different connection. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember oh, that? Like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like two minutes. It's like, okay, oh my God, who was plug that? the cable from here, plug the cable in there. <sighs> Back, th- was, it, was it an iBot power player? I, an ex iBot power player? I'm not sure. I have no idea who it was. But all I know it was Murica. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. But I can't remember who it was. But that's that's, that's going to annoy me a lot now. Okay. It continues. Epsilon with a two round advantage here versus G Play, who are back on the bite. And they have an AWP of their own in the name of Bubble. You're having a bubble, mate. If you don't know what that means, then. Uh, Check the Googlers. So we have a four-man push towards the B site. Scream just going to run into the site here. He's like, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Gets a frag as well. That is mad YOLO from the French right now. Two frags onto the B bomb site. Bomb is going to go down pretty quickly, and Bubble is miles away. So you have to wonder if they're going to go. Like, what is? What are the options for a G play here? Do they try and get a quick frag and then pull back if they can't make it? Because Bubbles just standing around in apps right now. No, just so just it's like his yeah. it's like his WA, WASD is dead. Yeah, they just want to keep this these weapons alive because they can just buy an next round no matter what. But Bubble is it, it's it's a pretty rough situation. I mean, there's lots of ways obviously you can play it. You can either just go NIP style and just play like really passively and. Uh, just rely on like really really awesome setups. It depends if they've if they've developed that sort of uh, style. That's what they can use, or maybe G player actually more of a maybe Bubble is supposed to be more of an aggressive orper and find the edges that way. Some teams are like that. Like you know we s- we saw that Kucha was doing this quite well for for Hellraisers despite you know being replaced by oh sorry oh sorry you know re- yeah well essentially replacing the role that simple left open of of an orper an aggressive orper Kucha did quite well there and that, that opened the round up um, for. F- for Hellraisers and made their defenses easier because there are less players to worry about. Then they could just go back and play more defensively after getting the opening kills. Is Bubble, like, do they need to do that? Because the problem, that the thing that I'm afraid of is if Bubble is going to plan on these aggressions with the AWP, what if he runs into FX show and just dies? Then it's, then it's like, they have to split two to a site and Epsilon have a massive advantage. So, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I, I would like to see more NIP kind of a style from them. Um, against Epsilon, because F- Epsilon are going to be really good at finding these picks. But yeah, it's, it's, it remains to be seen, I suppose. Because this is the first time we're seeing these AWPers face off against each other. Indeed. I think this is going to be a longer pause than the previous ones, guys. So we're going to cut to a break. You guys can listen to some esports music, and then hopefully we'll be back with the rest of this match.
Welcome, ladies and gents, to Face TV. We're back again. I think we're ready to go now. I think they're going live. Obviously, uh, if you're just joining us, we have some, well, DDoS issues. It tends to happen a lot with Epsilon matches. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully we're going to be rolling on through with the rest of the rounds keep with the rest on, of the maps. It's fine. And no more, no more delays. Uh, we can only, can only hope. can only hope. Indeed. But, uh, yeah. Are you, are you religious, James? No. I've recently become a devout um, follower of the Spaghetti Monster. I have the book actually on the flying Spaghetti Monster. Yeah. But I haven't read it. Bless his, his noodly appendage appendages. Mm. It's pretty... It's pretty I, 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 I had spaghetti for lunch actually. Hot I had spaghetti did. with lobster for lunch, wow. You're not allowed to do that. It was really nice. Not to do that. Okay, so see Biggie just throwing a nade away because he wants to buy a different nade. Is going to leave spawn with two flashes, a molotov, and a smoke. So this is another buy round for G play. We've got uh, orpers for both sides. Bubble going to play the J JW spot, and it's being approached by GMX. Surprise! He goes down. Bomb hasn't been seen though. Or I'm not sure actually if, if it fell or if he threw it. So we will see. But we have a pop flash going towards Arch there from Afexio. See, um, I throw a similar pop flash, but I throw it higher. But mine's worse because if you're standing under the awning on arch, then you don't get flash. So that one definitely superior. Adjusted to flash everyone. So we can see the impact bubbles having now. We were talking about how aggressive play could be the edge that they would need. And uh, this, the apartment's push was really smart. Good gamble. Going to pay off for them. Epsilon, can they save it though? Look at this. About to jump on in here for this push on arch. Bubble ready with the... The AWP does get flashed and smoked off a little bit, but there's still a gap for him to see through. Oh, this is dangerous here. If they think that that's smoked off, but oh, back through to library now. Looking to rattle off some shots through the smoke. How does that not connect? <laughs> wow, that's very unlucky for Bubble. FX show in the meantime is going to get the kill onto Spidey Dash. They wrap through Speedway. FX show takes down Bubble along the way. And now Victor is sitting here in construction. Going to be taken down by Uzi. And it is... Uh, just a train of destruction here through the map. The French side Epsilon with 10 seconds left. Get the bomb planted. And Dreamer and NKL not really left with any options but to save. Indeed, it's another round where the rap is real from Epsilon. There's a, there's a play on the word rap in there somewhere, but I'm not going to do it, Dan. I'm not going to do it. Rap. Epsilon should be surviving with four plays. And let's have a look at the team money as well. They are in the tens of thousands right now. That is fantastic news for them. 
as we do have the location of these players. Players is being approached, just watching each other's backs there. Good play by G Play. Latter stages of that round, but however, they have lost. And it is going to be Epsilon three rounds away from taking the first map here to go on to play Navi in the next round, the final round. But this is a best of three. It is a best of three. Currently 0-0. Zero, zero. Both teams playing for the first map. G-Play on the favoured side now, but they're getting a taste of their own medicine. But we are seeing a push all the way down mid from two of the players. And this is a full buy as well. But all the almost all the Epsilon players are in second mid. And with that uh, spray down from Dreamer, they're going to know that their position has been compromised. They're going to have to move fast here before they get flagged. However, NKL in a very strong position to A, get information for his team and B, take down two of the players and see the bomb. So it's working out for G-Play in the end. That aggressive push down mid has worked wonders for them. And that's going to be uh, almost a clean sweep for them. Only Nick, uh, NKL going down for them. So what a turn of events there for G-Play. Yeah, a bit of a mess there for Epsilon thanks to uh, that push of G-Play on second mid. And... It's rare that you see the bedroom hole actually do so much damage, but they they were under so much pressure from second mid that they just didn't check it. The first man just didn't check it. Right away, Bubble going to go for the aggression on Banana this time. There is a player by the logs. Can't really get so far. They will. As we see, nobody going down for either team. Just a bit of damage traded here and there. Interestingly, the same as you saw G play aggressively contesting Banana um, in previous rounds when they are on the T side. You see the same thing from Epsilon forcing the CTs to go back to the site. You can see Victor and Bubble there just holding more passive positions as Biggie comes in to cause a bit more havoc if he can. In the meantime, Spider just standing in the middle of mid with two people facing Boiler. Nick and NKL are going to get that uh, frag there. Which is going to slow things down. The bomb still loitering around the A side as they have 50 seconds on the clock. Still could go to either side here. There is an argument for Arch, which is going to be won by Uzi. The bubble on his way to show his disagreement. Oh! oh! The timing! He's left with one health. That's amazing. He's still alive. Dreamer is going to get the frag, runs out of bullets, and Epsilon. 2 on 2 now with 30 seconds left on the clock. They are aware that both players are rotating. Bubble is going to eliminate GMX by pit. And Effectio has got his Nike so, uh, going here as he runs up Banana into the B bomb site for the plant. And it's a quick check with the AWP there before the bomb is going to get planted there, punching in those numbers. The bomb is dropped on the site. So they haven't realized yet. They didn't rotate a man. They. Well, I mean, even after the bomb was planted, like Bubbles still thought it was on yeah. the main bomb site. That was very strange. Perhaps a bit of a miscommunication there that could be very costly as that bomb is ticking away. FX show guaranteed a quick one-on-one. -on -one. Cannot afford to miss this shot. And he won't. Bubble goes down. He's got Victor now speeding on through to construction. He's got to take effect show down. He's just got to challenge All he can if he do wants is this. Try to keep him on site to die. And uh, it's going to uh, back away there. Is there an op somewhere for him to be picked up, actually? Can he? No, there's nothing, there's nothing nearby, at least. So uh, there you go. And uh, Epsilon now, two rounds away from taking map number one. They had a horrendous start on their CT side. But so far, they appear to be rolling G-Play in the second half. Okay, so let's see where FXO goes. Looks like it could be a mid peak here with a flash as well. You do have to wonder if they are expecting... By round from G play, probably are. Nade will come out. I see that some money has been spent by the side. So, again, G play not going for the aggressive push on Banana this round as they did in previous rounds. And fairly standard positioning on the A side as well. So, we'll have Uzi and the rest of his team toying with uh, the areas. Gonna have a team flash peek onto A here. Sorry, B, sorry. But uh, not going to go his way. Spy leader getting that frag. No bomb sighted for the CTs. And the smoke offs will begin with one minute on the clock. You can see the CTs have actually no smokes left. But they have four Molotovs, so quite curious to see how they will come into play once the site push comes. It looks like it's going to be an A site push after all. Just waiting for that last smoke to dissipate there. That's GMX going to be in a position to cause some problems from the apps. 
Yeah, his timing is really key. GMX, if he, if he pops out just at the right moment when the pit player is distracted on quad, that's when he can get the entries. That's when he can open things up. The Dreamer with a quick frag on FXio is certainly going to make things a bit more difficult. GMX still stuck in the apartments, looking for that opening as the smoke will go down and obscure his vision. Tossing in the Molotov there into the back of pit. GMX still trying to get out. They very much know he's there. There's two or three players, in fact, looking at the angle. And Biggie and, and uh, Scream are left over. And they have noted that now the B bomb site's open, but there's no time for a plant to actually go down. Since Scream is, uh, looks like he's suffering quite a lot here on the lag as well, but he wouldn't have been able to get the bomb down anyway there. Either way, G-Play going to be putting it to a three-round deficit now. They're not very far away, and uh, the money for both teams is looking still a little bit sketchy, in fact. Epsilon finally buying almost within their limits. Okay, so two rounds away from the first game here, and uh, as Dan said, See the money starting to go down and down for both teams, actually. Epsilon with uh, not that much money on the board either. So this is going to be an important round for both teams. If G-Play can win this round, then they could quickly pull things back if they can stop Epsilon from planting the bomb here. We'll have to wait and see as uh, Wilder is just kind of trying to smoke, but it's going to be too late as the Epsilon players have already pushed through. Getting that Molotov down, we saw so many Molotovs in the previous round as well, but the site is in control of the French. Got GMX looking for that flank as well. Looks like NKL was expecting it, but doesn't get the better of him. Only three players remaining for G-Play. One of them still on the A site, taking down that flank of GMX. So it's all down to Spy Leader and Bubble to stop Epsilon getting to game points here. Gonna be completely smoked off from both sides. This is almost impossible for them. Spy Leader still... Oh, suddenly things have turned around. For FX it, only man standing, he gets fragged as well. Is there enough time for him to defuse the bomb? I think yes. there is. So many Molotovs, Dan. Yep. There's just fire and smoke everywhere. Yeah, Dreamer picking up a quad kill there. Three in a row. Very quick succession with the help of the Molotov. And G-Play managed to secure that one by the skin of their teeth. And Epsilon, though, they have gotten the bomb down in, in a quite a few rounds uh, preceding this. So they're still able to put a buy together thanks to that. Otherwise, it wouldn't look so dandy for them. We're even seeing a Galil there and a, and a Deagle. So you can only imagine what would have happened if they didn't have the extra 800 bucks in the previous rounds of Bomb Plant. But G-Play, can they hold on again here? Looks like they are playing with three on Banana. Looks like the trade could come in here very soon. In goes Spy Leader for the peak. He's got a teammate there to go for the quick trade. Victor is there going for the peak. They're trying to win the duel, but he's not going to connect just yet. And... That is going to put him in an awkward position. Bubble, maybe he can throw some flashes over here. But okay, there is the smoke there now for Victor to stay safe on sandbags. So four on four. Epsilon can certainly dictate the pace from this point forwards. As G-Play have to play defensively now. If they go aggressive on Banana, they're taking a risk that if somebody goes down, then the site is going to get taken immediately. They can't afford to take those kinds of risks right here. So they're going to play it by the book. That said, Bubble is waiting in the smoke. He's going to get flashed through. Bubble goes through the smoke with a flash. Excellent work there. Very nice idea from G-Play. It pays off. And they spot the bomb. That is key info. But Epsilon charging up, uh, sec uh, char charging up CT Arch there to try to get onto that wrap there. But it's not going to work. And G-Play look to have secured the rounds. All because of that really, really smart push through the smoke with the flash. They never expected that. Yeah, that was a calamitous round for Epsilon. Just good timing there from G-Play. Going to bring it back to 14-13. And now things are going to start to get really difficult for Epsilon. As we said, even though they got that bomb plant, which allowed them to get that one extra buy round out. So let's have a look at their money after this. Looks like they're going to have to go for the eco. Otherwise, they may just lose. And Oh, after time as well. You Look at that. Is he no money now? Ouch, that hurts. That really <laughs> hurts. That man is poor. Very poor. Yeah, and that just makes their eco all the more apparent. So we have the pistols coming out for Epsilon. Only the pistols. Scream with a... Uh, sorry, Uzi with a smoke and a flash. And uh, we t I think we made this point... I talked about this on, on the cash, mat cash match yesterday. When you go to, to a site like the CTs, you really want to try to make little pushes for information or at least eliminate possibilities because otherwise the numbers advantage is too strong. So let's see if uh, Epsilon can make something happen here. Well, not quite. We get eliminated uh, mostly there by Spy Leader. 
Um, but yeah, to just finish off the point, like we saw how effective it can be there, especially like the fact that they did see some players and they saw two players. They saw the bomb, but if they didn't see the bomb and there'd been presence on A, then they can they can make a really good guess as to what's happening, or they can make a make a play that that suits the situation as opposed to just waiting it out and, and praying. So. Okay. Amazing call. Cool. Crunch time for both teams here. Uzi, because of uh, being killed after the clock, can only afford a CZ now. Aggressive positioning once again from the CTs, but going to get flashed by the Ts. Going to be forced to pull back somewhat. Again, just uh, standard positioning once again from G Play on this CT side. Got early aggression. The uh, Epsilon team just trying to bait the grenades out here from the CT side. There's the first nade out. And once that smoke's out, they're just going to back off and apply some pressure elsewhere. So we'll have Biggie just loitering once again around the banana area. You can see he's playing close to the wall just in case the flash comes in, as we saw before. That guy gave G Play a free kill. And this time the bomb is going to be also in a safer position all the way down here with Effectio. Spider has been pretty good on the. Uh on those challenges where people try to like go for those those one-on-one -on -one picks uh, from from sandbags, but he's quite low, so he's not going for that anymore. It would seem, and Epsilon slowly taking some that control up into middle. So they've pushed G Play all the way back. So the idea usually here is that that uh, the CTs now it's very hard for them to know what's going to happen, and their rotation is very long. And uh, we even see the flanking coming in from GMX again, but here it is, the push on B, Spy Leader on top of Coil, spraying down two players. This is good work from the CT side, G-Play. It is 14 to 14. They might just take an edge here as there's just GMX left over to find. And he's going to find us off so many players trying to spray away. But it is now match point, or map point rather, for G-Play. This is map one between Epsilon and G-Play here for the face at the qualifiers. And it is a best of three. Dust2 is the next map. But uh, G-Play with a strong comeback here. Absolutely. And we'll see. There's still a force buy coming out for Epsilon. They managed to get four rifles and scream now with the Tech 9. And we've seen what he can do with that gun. So, three people slowly emerging up Banana. You saw an aggressive positioning from Bubble and Enkel as well as on Banana. They were all having a look to uh, see if they could put an early end to this round. Spy Leader almost getting caught with a nade in his hand, but has got the positioning to. Come in for the frags while his teammate on the site runs distraction. He's going to get two frags and back off through that molly, but there are smokes on the floor. So, four versus three now in favor of the Bulgarian team. Look, things looking good so far. Look away from that flash as the bomb gets planted onto the B bomb site. Now, the CT's playing for the retake. GMX in a position to flank, but uh, we have NKL coming up banana, so we'll see what role he has to play as things continue here. He's up on the that would be nicely placed in Sendiere, going to eliminate that. Very smart play as they try to go for this retake. Scream's coming into play now. Doesn't pick up any kills, and they are all going to get eliminated. G play 16 to 14, going to be able to take down map number one. But Dust 2 coming up next. But uh, if we just take a quick look at the scoreboard here at the end. Yeah, I was going to say Spy Leader without seeing the score and uh, the way that he'd been playing B. Definitely he was kind of MVPing for me. Like, and I liked how simple some of the plays were from him. And he became a bit of a playmaker as well, like being the man to get flashed in and so on and so forth. But we saw how simple, uh, and, and this is something that everyone, you guys at home, can copy very easily. We can see how simple the setup was between Spy Leader and his teammate there on, on B. So he's like there, he's like got the nade in his hand. He's just, it's kind of like when people do the same thing with a knife. They're just kind of trying to see if there's a T that's going to peak. Because he wants to throw the nade, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to like go for a one-on-one -on -one there because the risk is too high if he dies, and then it's, then it's horrible. But he just wants to get the nade down. And then, and then if they do push him, once he's got the nade out, he goes back, they run into his teammate, teammate shoots, and then he can peek. It's a very simple counter-strike, but that's what, that's what the B-site is about. And uh, so, so there you go. Um, very, very nicely done by G-Play. They're looking pretty, pretty sketchy for a while. I don't know, Epsilon started to get the AWP on FX, Joe started to look really bad, but, but yeah, excellent hold by them. I like it. Okay, so uh, I think that's going to be it until we go through to Dust2. So, I mean, yeah. what are you expecting from Epsilon? Because obviously, historically, they we said it before in their previous Dust2 match, it was a situation where often you'd find a lot of them dead on the T side, and in effect, so they'd just be stuck in mid, um, arguably playing, playing the AWP too passive. But again, yeah. he has been more aggressive so far this year. But I think definitely that it's going to be key that he... I mean, for me, even though I just asked you the question, I'm going to answer it myself before <laughs> I let you answer. I feel, like, I feel, like, I feel like he needs to open them up. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
how, so how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's loads of, like, options and ways for, for it to be done on this map. There's, like, loads of ways to use someone with his skill sets. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's massive on T and CT. Like, the orping is so important. There's so much you can do with it. It's like Mirage. Like, there's so much you can do with it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they can, how they can come back into this. I would, I would say that Epsilon, in theory, should be a better Dust 2 team than an Inferno team. And that's kind of, well, the results have been very good in Inferno usually, but but they won't have such a bad start, I don't think. I don't think that's going to happen again. They got a really bad start. They got they went down like seven rounds or something straight yeah, away. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So I don't think that will happen again. So I actually think Epsilon, I think Epsilon should win this best of three. And I think that they have an edge over this team, G uh, Place. So, but I don't know. It, we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited to see. So we'll go for a break, guys, and we'll find out. Time will tell us. We'll find out very soon. See you in a bit.